Hello and welcome. Today I've got a guide for you guys. I'm gonna show you how to take your iPod Touch 3rd gen with nothing on it and fill it up with apps and games. And I'm also gonna show you how to install the Vitiris, which is a third party app store that allows you to download old applications that have since been abandoned or are no longer available to download or purchase on the app store. So both of these are iPod Touch third gens. They are both, well, this one's a 32, this one's a 64. This process involves your iPod Touch. I'm gonna to be using a 2019 MacBook Pro for this. And of course, you're gonna need a 30 pin cable and somehow be able to connect that to your Mac computer. And obviously you're gonna need your iPod. This works on iOS 5 devices. So any iOS 5 device you have, this will work. Apart from A5 processors, those are a little bit different. But essentially, this is only gonna be relevant for the third gen iPod Touch and the first gen iPad. Those steps are the exact same that I'm about to show you. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna connect your iPod to the computer, and now I'm gonna switch over to the computer view. Here we go, so I'm at the desktop here. You're gonna head into your browser of choice. I'm gonna pick Safari, and here's where you're gonna type in legacy iOS kit, just like that. Should be the first link, it's gonna be a GitHub link here. Click on that, and over here on the right, you're gonna click on latest. Scroll down until you find the legacy iOS kit Mac OS. Click on that, allow that to download. It's gonna go into your downloads folder. We are finished with Safari. I'm gonna go ahead and drag that onto my desktop because we're gonna be using this folder quite a bit. Now we're gonna open a terminal window. So if you know how to do that, you can find terminal. If not, click the spotlight, type in terminal and open it. Once terminal is open, we're gonna double click on that legacy iOS kit folder. We're gonna keep these side by side so we can see them both. This file here, the restore.sh is really the only file that you need to worry about. We're gonna take that, drag it into terminal click our mouse so that the terminal window is selected, and then click the enter key. From here, we're gonna click allow, and this is gonna run. It's gonna say it cannot be opened. Just click cancel, click cancel again. And now we're gonna click the return key, followed by our password. So type in your password and then click return. And we're gonna get this pop up here. You're gonna click install. You're gonna click agree. And it's gonna download an Xcode file system in the background here. This is gonna allow the legacy iOS kit to process all the information it needs for this. Depending on your internet connection, this could take anywhere from 30 seconds to 10, 20 minutes. So you'll just let that sit and download the software. I'll go ahead and speed through this. All right, once that was successfully installed, you can click done. And now we're gonna go ahead and drag restore.sh back into terminal and click on the return key. And now it's gonna search for our device. Remember our iPod Touch is plugged into the computer and it's gonna show up right here on the left side, iPod 3.1 in normal mode. It's gonna show the iOS version. Now what we wanna do is jailbreak our device. So you can see right here, jailbreak is gonna be the number two. So you'll type the number two and click enter. This is just warning you that there could be some problems. Back up your data just in case. We will agree to that by clicking enter again and now the device is gonna begin the jailbreak process. This can take anywhere from two to 10 minutes depending on how fast your computer is and what kind of USB connection you're using. And at this point in time, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back over to the iPhone camera. So here we are, the iPod Touch is restarting as you can see there, and we have our terminal window still open, still running in the background. Make sure you guys are not closing this window, so don't click the X, just let it sit and do its thing. We've got our progress bar now, and this process usually is pretty quick. There's gonna be one more step for us to do before the jailbreak is officially finished. So you can hear our iPod Touch connected to power there. Should turn on here in just a moment. There we go. We can go ahead and slide to unlock. And the next step once this tells you to, is gonna to be to click on this new icon that's on your home screen. But don't click it yet. You gotta wait for this to do its thing in the background. Okay, now it's finished and it's telling you 
that it wants you to run the Gilbert JB icon on the home screen. So that is the new icon that is here. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna tap it, it's gonna open and then quickly close. That's all you have to do. Now the program is gonna continue running in the background to finish that jailbreak. All right, the process has finished. When you get the blue save the terminal output now, that means that legacy iOS kit has finished doing what it needs to do. So we can close that and we can disconnect the iPod, but I'm gonna leave it plugged in because the battery's not that good. But we are finished with the computer. Once the iPod restarts, we should have Cydia on the home screen. Okay, here's our iPod, it has restarted. We can go ahead and slide unlock and we should get Cydia. Sometimes it appears as a white icon, but eventually it will fill in with the correct color. Just like that, we can go ahead and click on it. it takes a while to load for the first time. It's gotta run a bunch of things in the background. So we'll let that sit and finish loading. Okay, once your device restarts, that means Cydia has finished. Go ahead and open that again. This time it should load normally. And once we're in here, we're gonna go into sources and we have two sources to add. So the first source, and I'll put it right here. You can pause the video if you need to see that, but I'll type it on the screen. It's gonna be cydia.akemi.ai, just like that, and click add. All right, once that's finished, we're gonna click edit and add another source. Now this source changes around from time to time, but currently this is what it is. If it's changed, I'll try to put it in the description, but it is YZU dot MOE dash dev, just like that. Click add, and this one should run through those scripts there. Once that's finished, we can click return to Cydia. Now we're gonna click on this one here. It's called Electamon's repo. Has the picture of the little app store. Click on all packages, scroll down till you find Viteris. Click on that, click modify, click install, and then click confirm. And this is gonna run in the background. There's gonna be one prompt for you to select, and that is just saying that you agree not to pirate any applications or games, just like that. And I'll talk a little bit about that. So this app store allows you to download basically any app or game that another user has uploaded. So there's an honor system here. The idea is that you are able to install apps and games that were once yours that you may have paid for on an old device that you no longer have access to or because they're no longer on the app store. This program is not intended to download applications and games that you have not owned in the past unless they are what's considered abandonware. I'll put that term right there. If you don't know what it means, give it a quick Google search. But basically, it's any application that the developers no longer support and have discarded and essentially don't care about it anymore for the most part, those things can be considered free to use for the general public. But let's get into Viteris here. It looks like the App Store, or it's kind of a mix between the iTunes and the App Store. But here is the main setup. You've got a Home tab, Featured, Categories, Search, and more. If you go to Featured, it's just kind of gonna randomly give you a bunch of applications that you can scroll through here. So we'll go ahead and click on this one, Virtual Lighter. Click on the little download button and it'll let you select a version of the app that you want and it's gonna download. Once that's finished, it will say success. You can click okay and that application should be on the home screen. And if it's working, you'll know right away because the app will work. If it just crashes, then that means it is not working like it should. So next up, we'll go to the categories tab so this lets you pick different categories that applications would fall into. So this is travel, lots of things here. I think what you guys are gonna be most interested in are searching for games. So we'll go ahead and do Minecraft. This was a game that I purchased and had back on the iPod Touch. So here you go, Minecraft PE. We're gonna pick a version. Usually the latest version is the best version, but for whatever reason, you may wanna pick a earlier release of a certain application. One thing I've noticed is larger applications, so anything that's over half a gigabyte, usually fail. They will not download, they won't install. 
So think of games like Asphalt 6, Asphalt 7, Grand Theft Auto. Some of those larger games will not install through the Viteris App Store, even if they show up. I don't know the reason for that. Hopefully there's a fix for that soon, but that is an issue that I have run into in the past. So here we go, we're gonna fire up Minecraft on our third gen iPod Touch. And we'll go ahead and make a new creative world here. And just like that, we've got Minecraft Pocket Edition running on our iPod Touch third gen. Pretty laggy and for some reason the buttons are massive, but it is working. So there you guys have it. That's been a quick look at how you jailbreak and add the Viteris application store onto your iOS 5 device. Specifically, this is an iPod Touch third gen and this process will be identical for an iPad first gen as well. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave me any comments or questions you have down below. I'll do my best to get them answered. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in another one of my videos.